Mariano Reyes. En el... Welcome to this edition of uh, JITO, that's Jain International Trade Organization Summit. I'm your host, Nigel D'Souza, from CNBC TV 18, and the key aspects that we are going to be focusing on are two of them. One is the art of stock picking, and secondly, how do you beat the index? By the index, you could mean the Nifty, the Sensex, the Nifty Bank as well. A couple of things which I have uh, learnt in this market is you always have your booms and busts. And although you may have people telling you this time is different, it is never different. It is the same story. The players are different. So it could be boom one, boom two, boom three, but the actors are different every time. Because people who lost money last time have learnt a lesson or possibly moved out of the markets. It's a new breed which takes the market up. Then a couple of other things people generally ask, you know, I mean, everyone has to develop their own individual style. I mean, what works for me need not work for any of you. I mean, I am more of a contrarian investor. I am more of a medium term investor. I mean, if you're, if you're talking of long term as 5 to 10 years, no. I mean, I don't even have a 5 year view or a 10 year view on the markets. I have a medium term view on the markets. So, I'm comfortable in that space. There are a lot of people who do intraday trades, speculation. It's not bad. I mean, if you can do it with a lot of discipline, you can make money. So, it's up to each of us to find out as to what suits us and take up that style. Finally, one thing, the last thing which I would like to discuss of what I've learned is, I mean, there could be a few of you who have invested 50% of your net worth in the stock markets, but even that 50%, just ensure that your lifestyle is not dependent on the stock markets. Your lifestyle has to be what it is, irrespective of whatever happens in the stock markets. And that's one thing which I made it I mean, extremely sure that I don't need to withdraw my investments in the stock markets for my lifestyle needs. Even if the market crashes by 20% tomorrow, you'll still see me standing up, talking with a straight face. I would like to highlight a couple of takeaways for you. Point one, like Amresh ji said, there are several, several market conditions which you go through since the market has emerged significantly from where it was 30 years ago. So, in these years, what we have seen today, we have seen what we have seen today. We have seen what we have seen today. And in the past, we have seen what we have seen today. So, in the past, we have seen what we have seen today. So, in the past, we have so in that context, let me introduce to you one specific instrument which might or might not have come to your attention. So LEAP is an instrument which was introduced in February 2008 by NSE, National Stock Exchange. They have introduced it. What does this do? This is what we do as we protect our knowledge. We take insurance. We take insurance on our cars, on our factories, on our cars, on our cars, on our cars. Like that. Index को अगर beat करना है, तो index पे अगर insurance मिल सके तीन सालों का, इसका क्या मायने हैं? ये मायने हैं कि अगर market आधी हो जाती है, तो NSC के द्वारा आपको एक insurance मिल चुका है कि जितनी भी गिरावट आती है, उतने का मुआवजा, उतने का compensation आपको अगर मिल सके, और ये ऐसी unique insurance policy इंडिया में 10 सालों से हो। इसका प्रयोग करना ना करना is a matter of choice. It should not be a matter of ignorance, in my opinion. अब दूसरा सवाल, the obvious question, which the subsequent one would be, to say यार खर्चा कितना? अगर पैसा बहुत ज़्यादा खर्च हो, 
तो यार रिस्क खुद ही ले लें इतने पैसे अगर जेब से चले गए तो यार रिस्क लेने में बेहतरी होगी तो आपको ये इट विल बी एन वेरी सरप्राइजिंग नंबर दैट यू कैन प्रोटेक्ट योर पोर्टफोलियो एटलीस्ट ऑन निफ्टी एट अ कॉस्ट ऑफ टू परसेंट अ ईयर रिस्क आपका वेरिएबल है आप निर्णय लेंगे कि रिस्क क्या लिया जाएगा the last one year has been this constant everyday joy uh, that our stocks will kind of double or do it's almost we are entitled to 2% a day but the last 6 weeks or maybe the last 4 months have changed quite a bit of that so i'm going to uh, bring in a, bring in about three points which i want to bring in about how uh, one or i look at markets when they start becoming uh, slightly weaker and the first point i bring to you is opportunity in all markets regardless of when uh, you know markets are up or down your investments will see a phase where you are underperforming severely from the markets one of your stocks will be a stock uh, which has fallen 30% and you can't explain why uh, sometimes uh, stocks fall and in those processes they actually bring in opportunity let me bring some examples Uh, there is a stock called Apollo Tires. Uh, at some point, it decided I will go and buy this big company in the US called Cooper Tires. Instantly, well, not instantly, but in a few days, 96 rupees became 60 rupees. So, if you are holding the stock, you are thinking I have lost like I don't know uh, 33% of my money or 35% of my money. But effectively, uh, there is a thought process that evolves. What's happened here? There is a chance that Apollo actually buys this Cooper Tire for whatever money it has. Uh, it will get a worldwide presence it will have something in the us something in china uh, it will be probably one of the only indian companies to have that kind of presence and over time that will obviously recover a lot of value so long term good if it does but there's also this thought process that says well china will not allow india to become an owner of a big company like cooper and they will not let the merger go through then well it was 96 rupees before no so it will go back there so one case the merger goes through you're still okay one case the merger doesn't go through you're still okay so at 60 rupees when the price had fallen to that uh you could take this kind of a view that said listen heads i win tails i win this is uh, more like the opportunity that you would see that would not come to you often we organized the jito growth summit 2018 because we as bangalore chapter just completed 10 years of our existence The purpose of this event was to help the underprivileged families of our community to start a small business in ready to eat pack snack food. The entire proceeds of this event is going to be utilized to launch more than 150 products for these families. At Stock Market Institute, we train individuals on how to invest in stock markets. The entire organization's philosophy revolves around the fact that we want to train people on how not to lose money in stock markets. We are a global body of informed investors headquartered from London and on a mission to spread financial literacy across the globe. Okay all right uh, I hope all of you all uh, have got a good amount of knowledge but now we'll have the fun part we'll do a small discussion uh, with our three panelists and then we'll open up the floor to uh, questions from all of you deepak we are focusing on two things one is the art to beat the index and second is when you're looking at a particular stock how do you identify something that it gives potential so how do you beat the index first i was looking at your twitter account just now some of your contra calls as well tell us how do you beat the index in india our indexes are not very well constructed so if you if you have uh, the nifty it is very strong on oil and gas on banks on it uh, and on metals uh, very very basic uh, concepts but not so many manufacturers in there uh, not so much of the consumer space that's why uh, in there so if your industry that you're looking at grows at a much higher pace than any of these mm-hmm. and many of these are growing oil and gas and so on you'll find that your stocks will consistently beat the index over long periods of time uh, and uh, uh, as much as they say a mainstream index like the nifty is which is only 50 stocks i think india has to mature into looking at larger and wider indexes like the nifty 500 and so on 
and that's when I think beating the index will become important. So uh, first choice is choose whether you want to uh, beat the index or actually uh, remove risk because there are two different approaches to it. And if you're looking to beat the index, choose uh, stocks and sectors that are likely to do much better than the index stocks and sectors that currently exist. All right, uh, let's take that point forward then. Firoz, if the index is down 20% and you have stocks that are down 10%, would you consider that beating the index? You know, I, I'm sure you'll be looking at inflation and other aspects as well. So take us through, how do you look at the index? How, what is your definition? of beating the index, Keep, keeping in mind there's something like an inflation somewhere. When you're looking at beating the index, the index can be minus 20 like Nigel said and you have fallen 10, so you've beaten the index by 10%. So we see it as two. One, the beneficial part is when you've beaten the index on the downside, you have stored value. You have stored value for the future, so that's one good advantage. Right. Right, because if you've beaten it, someday when the when the Nifty reverses, you have an extra 10% to make. So there, patience becomes the key element. Second, which Nigel said, inflation. Now, what am I trying to say? If inflation becomes the first thing to beat, my objective would be to beat inflation, not to beat the index, if you ask me personally. So when you form your objectives, beating an index, because there, there are 19 indices, whom all will I beat? I would beat and make sure that the power of money is restored. So that's how I would form my objectives to devise a strategy to beat that. Okay, valid point uh, then, Fedoz. Uh, Amrish, coming to you then. What are the factors you look at when you're trying to identify a stock? When the going is good, everyone performs. Even the donkey runs. But then it's always better to buy a good management in a bad sector, when I say a bad sector, the sector is not doing too well, than buying a bad management in a good sector. Because finally, you end up losing unless you are not too fast to enter and exit. Then we also look at what sort of a moat is there in that particular sector, uh, I mean, for, for that particular company in that sector. Then surely the financials, I mean, it has to. I mean, uh, reach whatever parameters we have kept. So generally, uh, we look at uh, return on equity should be closer to about 17, 18 percent plus. So these are a couple of things which you look at. All right. So a short point then. Uh, Praj is a stock. Being there at the right place at the right time, I would also put guts in there and good luck. You know, because that's rather important as well beyond all the you know, the hard work that you put in as well. So that's Ambitious big pick as well. Uh, Deepa, coming across to you, what could be the next big outperforming sector? People are saying farmers done and dusted. PSU banks are not the place to be in. But according to you, what can bounce back? I remember just a short while back, people were saying IT, that's not the place to be in. And IT out of nowhere has given you 30% returns in this year, but the index has not done much. So what can be, you know, that that sector that really outperforms. To be fair, if I knew, I wouldn't be telling you. But uh, so this is wild guesses as, as much as that goes. So uh, I think from one angle, if you look at where the results are and how uh, uh, things have shaped up, your mid-cap IT space seems to be where a lot of the action uh, seems to have happened, both from an earnings growth perspective plus 68 rupees 30 paisa. And they don't hedge their uh, uh, exposures much. So there is potential that this space, uh, especially where a company has built a certain amount of IP in uh, a space, because if you go to a customer and say, listen, whatever you want, I'll do. I'll put a team behind it and do it for you. Versus saying, you're building an electric car, I already have the base uh, software, the skills, the people, the technology. I will implement it for you. I can turn it around for you in a much faster way. You're more likely to get those contacts. A lot of small IT companies, uh, some of them in Bangalore itself, have actually got that kind of capability. And uh, uh, I won't take names because we are also in the process of evaluating and buying them. That is one space. Pharma and textiles may continue to surprise in the next one year. Be selective because not everybody in the textile story, not everybody in the mid-cap IT story is going to make it. Okay, all right. You know, there will be a lot of uh, youngsters out here who make 15, 20, 25 lakhs. But how important is it for them to have an objective 
in the next 20 years and how do they get there? You must be getting a lot of these queries. Yeah, yeah I do. Uh, I think, I think uh, as far as what Nigel's point is, it's very important to understand the basic principle. If you've got a transaction right, yeah. you will make money. If you get your strategy right, you will create wealth. That's clear. I can give you a transaction which can make you money in this forum. That will be party money, you will probably be able to party for a year. But if you got your strategy right, then you are going to party and change the wealth status for long periods of time. Alright, uh, then uh, Amrish coming across to you, yeah. the big contrarian call that you would have taken or you could advise you know, people that this could be the big contrarian call that you are looking at. I ask you this because in your introductory speech we are talking about that. Uh, I mean, generally, most of the calls which I take are contrarian calls mm -hmm. because that's the way I made. So, what could be the contrarian call they are looking at? Uh, I mean, the uh, recent contrarian call I can talk about since it's already played out. Uh, it, uh, it was HEG, Hindustan Electrographide, and uh, that followed from my uh, sort of a pick in the metal space, in the steel space. But then, uh, currently, uh, I would say a contra bet or a contra call could in fact be in the PSU banking space. And this is a bold call which I am taking when everyone is quite negative on the, the space. One thing is for sure, and end of the day we are talking of uh, the Indian banks and the PSU space that they will never close down. The government can cannot afford to let the PSU banks shut down, even okay. one of them. Okay, alright. Uh, we're going to throw the flow open to some questions now. Alright sir, please, you go ahead and ask me first. Most of the pharma stocks are written down. Yeah. And in view of Modi's plan to bring in health insurance, do you think good, even good companies will improve over the years? Or in general, good pharma companies are likely to improve over the years? I think uh, health insurance per se is not going to you know, change. Most of the pharma stocks, uh, depending on which one you look at, uh, they will have a part that is uh, India based domestic and there will be a part that is not. So Sun Pharma itself has a part, significant part that is uh, India, but an even higher uh, part that is outside of India. Let's say that for whatever reason something in India drops, uh, you will find that uh, the, the, the story will be very different from outside India. If Halol, uh, the plant in Halol gets FDA approval, it will overshadow anything that happens inside of India. It's similar to Tata Motors, the Jaguar Land Rover story is so big now, you could triple India commercial vehicle sales and it won't make any difference because that JLR can fall 10% and offset all of that. So, uh, the story is not essentially uh, based on only the domestic or only the uh, foreign player. But in general, uh, uh, common health insurance will actually improve uh, things for uh, domestic pharma. I heard people saying that uh, stock market is a gambling world. Is it correct? Is stock market gambling? Uh, stock market is not at all gambling. Why is it, why is it that some people say it is gambling? is because they didn't get their fundamental right. Why is it not gap? Think about it. Who are we, whom are we buying the sh shares of? Large corporates of India? Partnering with the large corporates of India, how could it be gambling? Apna business chalao, to fir wo bhi gambling ho gaya. Equity is nothing but partnering with the cream a la cream of this country. Why is it termed as gambling is? Because they don't want to buy ownership. They want to buy the price. Aap aaj khari dehen, kal bech dehen. To aapne business nahi khari da, uska utar chadaav khari da. So, actually you are right. I was analyzing the data of the broking outfit which we run. 22% of traders come and go away. Every year. So, trader attrition is 22%. Matlab, 4 saal mein pure client hi chale jayen. Trading they couldn't handle it and they left. Because trading is something which is which can be a part of your strategy. It can't be full strategy. 
So point one, it is not gambling. Why is it not gambling? Partnering with the largest corporates, Ilvo Infosys, the LNTs, the HDFC banks, it can't be gambling. If you partner with your friend in a restaurant, would you call it gambling? Okay, all right. So I think on that note, we'll have to wind down. It's been a pleasure interacting with all of you all. You can interact with me and all our panelists right after this. For the time being, we'll wrap up on this edition. Thank you so much, Bangalore, for having us.